Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant. Today's video, we're going to talk about why Micro Four Thirds, in a lot of ways, is vastly superior to full frame camera systems. So let's roll that intro and let's get straight into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, Micro Four Thirds. In a lot of ways, it is vastly superior to full frame camera systems. Now, before we move on, I do use Micro Four Thirds. It is my chosen platform, uh, well, mount I should say, but that doesn't make me a Micro Four Thirds snob completely. I use full frame systems. I've got my Nikon D700. I get this bad boy out every now and again. I also have a Nikon D90 that I use a lot, especially for my personal work. I love that little camera. I recently just purchased a Canon 6D Mark II for an absolute bargain. So, you know, I do like Micro Four Thirds, however, I do use other cameras, I do use other systems. Cameras are tools. For me, Micro Four Thirds is my favorite. And in a lot of ways, Micro Four Thirds does have the edge over full frame. I got five reasons why, in my opinion, I think Micro Four Thirds is superior to full frame. So let's get straight into it. Okay, number one, size and portability. Micro Four Thirds really does have the edge over full frame cameras when it comes to size. Here's my Nikon D700 right here. Look at the size of this thing. I do love this camera, it's fantastic, but I'm more inclined to pick up my Panasonic GX9 over this one, especially if I'm going out for street photography, family shoots and stuff like that. I'm gonna be picking up this camera every single day of the week. Just look at the size different there. We got chunky, we got lightweight, okay? I'm more inclined to pick up the lightweight. Generally smaller than most full frame systems. I must say the Panasonic G9 camera, when it comes to Micro Four Thirds, it is probably one of the bigger ones, but still in the grand scheme of things, it's a small, lighter camera. Great convenient tool for travel photography. One of my favorite combos on earth for travel photography is my Panasonic G85 paired up with the Panasonic Lumix 12 to 60 lens. This thing, you could just put this in your bag, travel the world with it, and you wouldn't miss a beat. Also, street photography, man, the Panasonic GX9, if you follow the channel, you'll know I love this little camera, and this is my main tool when it comes to street photography. Particularly paired up with the Panasonic Lumix Pancake Lens, this is the 20mm f1.7. This is a great lens for street photography, great little combo. Or even the cheap and cheerful Nifty 50, the Panasonic 25mm f1.7. Small, lightweight, great for street photography. So in my opinion, size, portability, travel photography, street photography, EDC, all that sort of stuff, Micro Four Thirds has it nailed down and beat over full frame systems. Okay, second reason, cost effectiveness, okay? Micro Four Thirds is a hell of a lot cheaper than full frame cameras, okay? On the new market, you can get a Panasonic G85 with the kit lens, the 12 to 60 kit lens, Lumix lens, for under $1,000 here in Australia, brand new. It even comes with the Panasonic Lumix 25mm f1.7. That's a great deal. The cheapest full frame system you can get over here is the original Panasonic S5, and that's still about $3,000 with a kit lens, okay? So for the results you get um, when it comes to Micro Four Thirds, which are absolutely brilliant for both stills and video, for the cost effectiveness of it, it has it over full frame. So any photographers that are on a bit of a budget and have, you know, want to save some coin, you're way better off picking up Micro Four Thirds over full frame. 
Okay, number three, lenses. Oh my Lord, there are thousands of micro four thirds lenses to choose from. Just from Lumix alone, Panasonic Lumix, and the Leica um, collaboration that they do, those lenses are absolutely fantastic and there are tons of them, both new and on the second hand market. Always picking up great micro four thirds lenses second hand. And that's just from Lumix too. Don't forget, you've got Olympus lenses as well, okay? And Olympus lenses will go on Lumix cameras and vice versa. Also adapting lenses, that's a big thing in micro four thirds land. Here's my Viltrox Speed Booster. One of the reasons I got the Canon 6D Mark II was because it come with the 24 to 105. Adapting that lens to the GH5 Mark II or the G9 is just fantastic. So you can adapt all your old Canon EF lenses to micro four thirds, brilliant stuff. That's that's also not to mention the third party lenses, Sigma make micro four thirds lenses, the cheap seven artisans and TT artisans, all those third party manual focus Chinese brand lenses. There's a plethora of those too. Even in the Panasonic ecosystem, the S5, the full frame lenses, yes, they are making more of them. However, the Panasonic micro four thirds systems still have guns more lenses compared to the full frame system. Okay, number four, video capabilities. So the original GH5, that is, to a lot of people, still the number one go-to camera when it comes to wedding videography. Um, you know, lifestyle videography, corporate videography. That is the number one camera. It's a great camera. The GH5 Mark II, the step up from that, brilliant video camera through the roof. Now the GH6, that camera is fantastic for video. So Micro Four Thirds, in my opinion, do have the edge when it comes to videos over full frame cameras. And that's another point I'd like to make. Micro Four Thirds is often overlooked when it comes to hybrid shooting, okay? Shooting both video and stills. Micro Four Thirds, Lumix cameras, Olympus cameras are great for that sort of thing. So I'm currently filming on my GH5 Mark II. That is a great video camera, hands down. Awesome video camera, one of the best ones I've ever used. However, it is also a fantastic stills camera as well. Image stabilization, okay? Panasonic led the charge when it comes to image stabilization. They still do. Absolutely fantastic, but Lumix is right behind there. Especially if you pair your Lumix cameras up with a stabilized lens, okay? We all know Micro Four Thirds is a smaller sensor. Doesn't do the best in low light. However, the image stabilization in camera and with a uh, stabilized lens, you're gonna get great results in low light. So yeah, there you have it. Let me know if there's anything I've missed. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff why Micro Four Thirds is better than full frame. Um, let me know down in the comments below or please let me know, you know, if I'm completely wrong too, why full frame is better than Micro Four Thirds. I'd love to hear those people too because there's a lot of experts out there. So yeah, if you like this sort of thing, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot. Big thumbs up for the video and I'll see you all next time. Bye.